Hey everyone, we're here playing Hellward. I uh, put out a little post because Bird's busy tonight, and I was like, alright, suggest visual novels to, to record with Illusory Wall, and then I put them all in front of him, and he and he chose Hellward because he zeroed right in on Dengpa's art, which is fair enough. Yeah, uh, I uh, I was sort of torn between this and Temptation's Ballad, which looked like some silly fun, um, but the art style of this just caught my attention right away, so I was like, yeah, this looks good. And as we were setting up, I just noticed in the background the, the this says extra. And I'm like, can you click on that? Everything else is highlighted when you highlight it. Can you click on extra? And you can. Should I be afraid? What is this? I haven't heard any audio. That is a massive Game Boy. Game Boy. I was just looking at that. I was like, is that like... Is it like an alarm clock made to look like a Game Boy? Look at this guy. Current Huge. extra scene is available upon completion of initial chapter. Interesting. Interesting that it's a it's, it's an extra scene you trigger by clicking on him in bed. <laughs> now I know the uh, the DMG01 Game Boy was pretty massive, the original brick, but yeah. not quite that massive still. I'd be concerned. I I appreciate the 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 belly peak breathing. This guy's just chilling. All right, we'll check out the extras later, maybe. Let's just go ahead and start this up. It's dark. You want to be question mark, man? Sure. Hey. It feels warm. Hey. Been trying to meet you. Meet ya. Hot, even. It's dark and it feels hot, as if you were basking in front of a temperamental sun. There's no light, however. The world seems void of sensations. Hey. Must be a devil between us. <laughs> Keep this going. Actually, there is one sensation, a noise, a voice calling out to someone. That sound effect throws me off each time it happens. Hey! Ooh. The game does have audio. Hell yeah, let's go. Sir, you seem to be transparent. You can I am just... a loser. <laughs> You can just see through him into the background. That's a trip. Okay. Yeah, what is happening? Uh, the music is rad. Yeah. Dozing off? Dozing off? Were your eyes closed? They're open now. The large figure stares down at the meek expression on your face. Oh, uh... No, I was just... Huh? Oh, it's me. Oh, is that you? <laughs> that must Sorry, be me. You go for it. <laughs> oh, uh, no, I was just... Huh? You all right there? Shorty? That is... Well, that's well. You stop yourself mid-sentence, examining your surroundings. They're bizarre and should definitely be confused. And you should definitely be confused. Weirdly, however, you only feel slightly curious as to your current location. It feels as if you've been here before. What is this place? It's called a restaurant. Uh? <laughs> Ever heard of one? You blink, expecting something to happen, but your surroundings stay the same. Are you sure? Ha. <sighs> You've definitely lost it. I haven't lost anything. It is... It's just... This all feels weird. Well, it has been a second, right? I know I'm kind of anxious, too. Two? How assumptive. You aren't anxious, right? You don't argue with this assessment, however. Instead, staring at the smiling figure casually slumped in the seat in front of you. You're anxious? Uh, rubbing it in, huh? Want to know a trick? Uh, no, I, I hate <laughs> interacting with people. Shut the, shut the conversation <laughs> down right away. 
Sure. All right, something that's always helped me is closing my eyes. Then, breathing in slowly, holding it, then breathing out slowly. It helps a lot. Try it. They look towards you, bright with anticipation, to see you try. It's not, it's not too much of a trick, you think, just a breathing technique. Breathing in, five, four, three, two, one, then out, five, four, three, two, one. Hey. There's a voice next to your ear, but you find yourself far too tired to answer it. Suddenly something wet brushes up against your cheek. Uh, <laughs> 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 Alright, we're just getting right into this. I didn't know what the vibe of this was going to be, uh, but yeah, that got horny real fast. <laughs> what a perspective. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm amused by the fact that you, I think you saw the tweet Crimson says that the current build of the game doesn't feature any 18 plus scenes yet and I realized that furry artists might have a warped idea of that <laughs> oh right right stuff that's like extremely suggestive is like still kind of adult you know yeah like maybe there isn't a sex scene in this build of the game but this is one hell of a perspective uh i don't know after censoring i don't even know what's going to be left of this but for perspective we are currently just betwixt thighs just jammed in there <laughs> just <laughs> hey what is this Uh, uh, what is what is what? Oh, it's you. <laughs> what is what? Uh, you okay there, Shorty? Um, I was about to say, can we look slower? <laughs> that was a pretty quick pan. Their large figure hovers above you now, wearing a traditional ceremonial garb. It's ill-fitting and tight to their person, as if any sudden movement could cause it to snap and fly apart. Which makes sense, given who they're typically made for. That isn't what catches your eye. There's a painted paw marking on his chest. Hey there, my eyes are up here. Get it? Because... <laughs> Did you get mated? Ha. Huh. They snicker mockingly at your question. And what's so funny? Sorry, I'm still getting used to it. Yes, mated. No, duh, shorty. You clean your arms. You cross your arms sternly when something catches your attention. You sniff around for a second. It smells like home. <laughs> it's jammed in here. This isn't a restaurant. Sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> you told me you were good with your liquor. <laughs> This is interesting because this is when at the moment I see anything like this, I think, oh, this must be some kind of fantasy setting. But the previous dialogue suggested a restaurant and the start screen had street signs. So right. I wonder if we're going between two worlds with two versions of the same character or something, which is oddly on point because I I, uh, I showed you. Uh, oh, God, I never remember the name of that comic because it's I don't understand why it's called what it is, but I showed you the. Uh, his other comic, and that one ultimately splits between a demon world and a not demon world. But that was because I think there was backlash at a specific reveal, and they tried to like split the narrative into two versions or something. Ah, uh, okay. I miss I miss those characters. That's the one with the uh. Actually, I always forget what the little guy was was, but the big one, Marsh, was like this big dog. Let's see. <laughs> Maybe we should just head back and get some rest, huh? 
The circumstances of your current situation are unclear, but you find yourself compelled to reject their suggestion. No, I'm perfectly fine. Okay, then. The figure, the figure pulls their body into yours, heat radiating off their form. You find it to be really comfortable. You reciprocate, pushing up into their bulk, your arms unable to, full, to wrap fully around their muscular form. Is this good? Is this a hug? Whatever it is, it's certainly exhausting. In fact, you even begin to pant. I don't think a hug's supposed to be exhausting. Right. It, yeah, that's fine. I... Their words are hesitant. You pat them on the back and look at their cheek. It's all right. Their breath tickles your ear as they lean in closer. I love you. Uncertainty. Who is you, exactly? You aren't sure. Still, there is no hesitation in your part. You know what to say. The soft, pur the soft fur on their neck tickles your nose as your two bodies sink further in. The ambrosia of minty perfumes combined with natural musk fill your senses. I love you. I love you even more. <laughs> It's uh, not a competition. You only say that because you couldn't win. Unrestrained laughter escapes your maw as you dig yourself further in, your, in, in their mane. How intrepid of you to mock this titan. While you're brave enough to joke, you easily found yourself wrestled back into the ground. Their cheeky smile looms above your face. This form of play is quite euphoric. You can't help it as your tail twists about. This is interesting. It's setting up like what might be a gay setting where there is a societal expectation to get married regardless. Like you. Right. The like mated you, thing. I was wondering about that. Yeah. Like you still have this. Uh, there's just this traditional. Uh, there's this tradition of being paired with somebody, but it's not necessarily the person you love. And I guess the, the question is whether this is taboo that they're just going off anyway or if this is just normal for this setting normal right. i think i think it's i think it's anhees who does it where there's a there's an entire ongoing comic series with these with its own complicated lore that i've never fully packed apart where there's these all these dudes that have like an x number of like rings uh pierced into their ear and x number of uh dots under their eye where it's like I think you have like X number of like proposals that you go through in the stage of becoming married to somebody. And that so it's like the number of rings in their ears, what stage of their relationship they're in. And then the number of like blue dots under their eye is some sort of, I think it's rem like representative of their, of their crimes or something. But huh. everyone's gay as shit. <laughs> like seemingly all the characters are gay all the time. And there's just that this tradition of marriage regardless, because that's just how you keep things going, I guess, in the in a setting seems, in an overwhelmingly gay fictional setting. That seems a very complicated set of rituals. You know, for a long time, like I didn't even under have the comprehension, like as a kid growing up, that like the like a uh, wedding band on, being on the certain hand like indicates that you're married. Like I didn't even know that was a, had a handedness to it. <laughs> so right. I feel like. Is there a handedness to it? Hmm. Yeah, isn't there not? Like, aren't wedding rings typically on the left hand instead of the right or whatever? Maybe. There's like God. an intuitiveness to the idea that the wedding band wouldn't go on the hand that uh, you work with, probably. I don't know right. if you're if your engagement ring versus your wedding band go on different hands necessarily. I know it's obviously the ring finger, but... I am yeah. pretty out of the I, loop here. I, yeah, I would I would be like the most out of the loop on all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I went most of my life pretty sure marriage was like not on the table. <laughs> yeah. You can't help it as your tail twists about. Neither could you help it as your legs swivel sp spiritedly under their force. Huh? <laughs> Try to parse what that description means a little bit. I do appreciate... Uh, 
having dedicated CGs for scenes as much as possible. I don't know how, how much that'll be the case, but right. it's a nice, it's a good break when it, for whenever you don't just have the sprites hanging out indefinitely. But it proves vain. You're overpowered. Just a trapped little trickster. You're so... Oh. You gasp as their thumb finds its way under your lips. Pleasure and anticipation arises in imagining where this might lead. A smirk and a flick of the tongue. That ought to send the message. You know how to tease them for sure. As soon as your little tongue licks the tip of their thumb, you find your maw locked in with theirs. A kiss. They pull away slowly. How meager, you tease. Show me how it's done then. Of course, you oblige. No time is wasted as your head twists to align itself perfectly for kissing. You quietly affirm your love again. They release you from your meaty shackles, your hands tracing up across their muscles and working their way toward around your neck. Around their neck. I'm really good at this. Uh, you pull yourself up and... <laughs> <laughs> Bap. <laughs> that mouth open. <laughs> Blah. Jump scare. Get whapped by a newspaper is my first thought. <laughs> ah! You find yourself in a stupor. Having been so rudely and abruptly awoken from your dream. It was fake. None of it was real. That was just a dream. Boo. So if the restaurant scene was real, which who knows, that definitely that was all that was all definitely a dream. But given that the restaurant scene took place in a restaurant, it might be that that is a person. The question is if they're making up a person that they fantasize about or if they're half remembering an old fling, but they, they the, the fantasies go into this like video game inspired setting. Mm -hmm. That noise. Annoying. The irritating, all too familiar sound of mechanical buzzing. It's your uh, Game Boy alarm clock. I'm going to keep insisting the Game Boy is an alarm clock. I know yeah. I'm sure that's not the case. Peep. <laughs> Peepers open, you find yourself goggling at the wooden surface above. <laughs> <laughs> that sentence is a lot. <laughs> oh. Ah. God is right. <laughs> As the rest of your senses kick in, so does the pain from your intimate exchange with the surface above. What? Hit your head on a bunk bed, oh, maybe? Oh, it's a bunk bed. He slammed yeah, his head I into it. I used to have a loft bed set up in an apartment I lived in in Philly where it was like I had my desk underneath my bed and like the amount of space between the mattress and the ceiling was not a lot. Like it was yeah. the most claustrophobic. Like it was like I was climbing into a coffin every night. It was pretty wild. I've almost one of the only times I've ever been in a bunk bed in my entire life was uh, sixth grade summer camp. And the first night I immediately like when I, I woke up at some point and just shot up too fast and just slammed my head into the top into the bunk above me oh, and, inst no. and instead of causing myself some great deal of pain i instead uh broke the board <laughs> so the person above me was mad at me for the rest of the trip <laughs> because they had a sagging bunk bed because i just yeah, busted yeah, I part of it <laughs> I don't I, I don't think I would fault you for that. I, I would just immediately assume that someone doesn't want to break a board with their head. Yeah, but. well, <laughs> s sixth graders aren't empathetic people. True, true. But uh, I have not proven good at uh, sleeping under another bed. I also hate the premise. I hate the entire idea that there's an entire mattress just above you that could just come down at you. <laughs> like that's the, third, no, that's the first I thought, regardless of reasonableness. I think I, I definitely I grew up with a bunk bed situation. I had to share a room with a brother in like the first house I grew up in. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I was weirdly comfortable with that loft bed set up as like ridiculous as it looked. Like people would look in my room being like, because I mean, other, other people have loft beds, but like it was really close to the ceiling. I, there, I couldn't sit up. It was not possible to sit up. In yeah. my bed. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, though, I am thinking a little bit like how. It might be a convenient way to increase the space I have available if I had like one of those beds that you can put like above a desk. Like, oh yeah. man, why haven't I? Why have I never thought about it's this a, idea until just it's now? It's a thing. <laughs> just having to climb in and out kind of sucks, you know. But uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I I dealt with it as when I in my early twenties. <laughs> yeah. Scratching out your nose ought to provide some form of relief and soothe the pain, but the gesture feels alien and strange. Oh, and you could soundproof the underside of the bed, and it'd be like better soundproofing yep. than most rooms for your recordings. Yep. <laughs> or rather impossible. Oh. Your attempt to form defying... You attempt your form defying stunt of snout rubbing like some kind of beast. Your claw marks the surface above. Shit. The ceiling again. Yeah, I, I think it's a loft bed situation. You already knew as much from the awkward motion, but you still find yourself clamoring to conform, confirm reality. You glance down at your hand, or rather, your paw. You wiggle the digits around lazily, still half awake. This won't do. Are you not supposed to have paws? Is that what I'm taking away from this? If because your your hand, or rather your paw, is a strange internal narration. If you have, if that's normal, <laughs> yeah. I'm also, and also the use of ceiling. I'm like, on some level, I'm like, did he beast mode like turn into a thing that has paws and then claw the actual ceiling? <laughs> <laughs> you sigh, then begin to concentrate. Pins and needles. It's as if your entire body has fallen into a cactus bush as some deep force arises from within you. It all starts with a thought, then it flows through you like veins. It makes its way to your chest, then the rest of your body. Resonant is what you are, a tuning fork for the innate magical language of every living being that every living being has in them. That makes it three days then. What is happening? Your tired thoughts wander. Such a lack of focus would hinder a novice, but for you, this was as, sim as simple as breathing. Incantate, shift, brush your teeth, take a shower, typical morning. Those first two words are not that. Right, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, in the real world, uh, there's going to be magic in the real world, it looks like. Yeah. And shift reinforces what I was saying a minute ago, that it's not supposed to be like this. Jesting helps you cope with the nuisance of your random nocturnal conjury. The mental image forms... As Aether rushes across your body like a hot shower, in moments you find yourself transforming. Okay. Whoop. Your shift doesn't only bring a different form, but also a different perspective. You expect your body to shrink, but... Instead you grow in size. How odd. Your snout once again kisses the surface above, as you find yourself crampedly close to its surface. Ugh. Scooch, scooch, scooch. You can feel your... Oop. It auto proceeded. Finally, you're up. And hopefully awake, too. Did I fall off the couch and roll underneath the table? That's a first. Oh, so he wasn't that big. Alarm. Moving day. Early. Sun. Uh, surprise in morning. Don't forget the suitcase. Several exclamation points. Too many exclamation points. Frustrating line spacing. And then buzzing. Annoying. Torturous, even. If only looks could kill. Not as if the device is alive, anyways. On the screen it reads... Thing I said. Finally. Now, on the screen, you can loosely make out the unkempt mane of some beast. Oh, there's his face. Look at that. First revealed it in a little reflection, although we found the extra menu already. I had to do a double take for just a second. I thought I was looking at the Smash Brothers logo. Needs another bar. Well, you, of course. A draggle-tailed little thing with a tired face. New markings trail down your cheeks. Ones you didn't have the day before. Ones you quickly rub off with the back of your hand. You are Tanuki. Miserable. You become quite alert. I mean, who wouldn't be? After the bash on the nose and the ringing of the alarm. Your limbs feel liberated. Motion born anew within your form. You feel so free. Your tail shoots up in the air, wriggling in fun little circles. <laughs> free. Yes. Because you're nude. 
A quick glance at your resting area. The couch tells you all you need to know, as you follow the trail of discarded clothing down underneath the table. You shoot a glance at your wooden partner's wound. Despite sharing a kiss, you spare no sympathy for the cheap furniture. Clothes bundle up. You stiffen them. The smells strike your nose without pause. Thankfully, it being of your own scent stops you from recoiling, but one thing is painfully clear. I smell like a damn dog. I should probably take a shower today. Wouldn't want, a sw to want the sweat from the long drive ahead compounding with this bestial funk. <laughs> <laughs> An extra lengthy shower is the first step in your morning routine. Then your teeth. Finally, you spend a fair amount of time grooming, clipping your nails, brushing off loose fur. Fin finally frumpless, you find your way back to the living room. However, there's something new. You're accompanied by an object near a third your size. I spent the, last, the past couple of days making sure to grab everything, so I should be good, then. You pre hands pressed up firmly against your rear, you work your way down your perfectly groomed tail. The necessity is ought to be on my person. There's nothing left to do. The suitcase is stuffed beyond measure with clothing, amenities, and trite baubles. There's no time left to second guess. You heft the suitcase with relative ease, an act that would certainly impress an uneducated onlooker, or so you think. I'm just wondering that if any of the packed clothes is going to fit. Yeah, I'm not clear... Is he normally, right. maybe, like, maybe we disregard the hand comment and he's actually normally a tanuki. He just was a different shape under that table that we haven't seen. So he, like, right. shape-shifted because tanukis do that. Uh, oh, yeah, duh. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's, that's that would explain that, yeah. Because I, I was still thinking he just transformed, like, into something that he wasn't before. And that was confusing me for a second. So I was like, oh, he's going, you know, like, his routine seems very locked in. If he's getting used to a new form, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's some uncertainties where he said hand, or rather paw, which was not an internal monologue. And then, uh, what was the other one? Uh, markings that he didn't have before, but we, right. didn't see, but we and then he wipes them away, I guess, but we didn't see the change. So I don't, so I'm not sure which part that means or what he saw or whatever. But I guess he's a, but he's, yeah, he's some sort of shapeshifter. As Tanuki's B, and I guess he's stronger than he looks. And everyone's probably a beast in this setting, because he was fantasizing about a wolf. Or a dog, and that means that they must exist. You feel the need to turn around, just one last time. No one. The place is empty. What'd you expect? Still, you give it one last heartfelt look. You're home for the past couple of years. Goodbye, place. Why is it named Howl? Any Howl? <laughs> Give us your uh, Demon Souls comparison voice. <laughs> it's three o'clock on the east side. Twilight speaking in, and I've just put my coffee down. How are y'all doing? The beginning of a new week means the beginning of another week of work for most of you. The early morning radio host continues to spout its truisms. Your trip has taken about five hours at this point. The monotonous abandoned uh, stretches of country you road are the only scenery to <clears throat> welcome your eyes for the past two. That's, I keep, I keep, I'm distracted. I keep trying to look at the background. That is a trip. It's got like yeah, a I wonder water... how long it's going to sc scroll for. Like, that that's too, a, yeah. immediately what crosses my mind. Like, where's the loop point? Yeah, it's got like this like watercolor effect with like just a handful of little defined ink lines. It to looks give great. It shape. What a trip! Radio chimes in with an infectious melody, which you hum hum along to. Mm hmm. You're quite bored. This is the second time you've made this long trip, and you question how you ever achieve it in the first place. Perhaps it was thanks to the music you had streaming in your head through the clip-on earbuds you wear often. An activity, a fortunately 
friendly officer informed you was illegal to do while driving on the road. An activity that you certainly wouldn't do again. Not that anyone would be around to see. On top of boredom was also anxiety. Not over the trip itself, but a growingly loud ticking noise that had started at around 30 minutes back. I started the machine like she said at least once a month. What could possibly be the matter? Unfamiliar with the inner workings of such a machine, you could only hope that this didn't spell, spell misfortune on your journey. But again... And louder this time. Damn machinery. And then, as if out of spite, you begin to feel the vehicle slow down. I take it back. Please, mercy, I have places to be. You beg with the machine. Its name working as not just a call for compassion, but also a means to personify the vehicle. But it continues its deceleration, unconcerned with your pleasantries or obligations. You let out a low growl, the verbosity of the local folk slipping out of your tongue as if natural to you. You sound like a true native. Fuck me. <laughs> uh, the, the language <laughs> of my people. <laughs> <laughs> Although you have not seen a soul for miles, you steal... Oh, that name is... He calls the machine Mercy. Not machine. I didn't catch that. You steal Mercy off the road as to not cause inconvenience for any passers-by. You mess around with the controls, but it refuses to start. Angrily, you scramble out of the vehicle and march towards the rear hood. You place your palm on it as if ready to go to war, but... Yeah! <laughs> you let out a loud yelp as you, as you nearly stumble back onto your ass as burning pain soars across your pads. The vehicle was quite hot. You didn't even know it could get so hot. Oh, no. You're fucked. <laughs> you mull about for a moment. Coming to the obvious realization. You have no idea how such a machine works, let alone how to repair it. You pick yourself up, instinctually licking at your wound. It doesn't take much time for the pain to subside. You ponder for a moment what your options even are. You remember your roommate providing you a number that could help you in scenarios like this one. You open your phone. But the symbol for making calls is grayed out. Thankfully, however, you know that the signal can change with location. You look off into the distance and begin to roam into the field nearby, all the while staring down at your cellular device. What about... here? Can you hear me now? Good. <laughs> Still, no signal. This will obviously take some time. Several minutes later, you hear something off in the distance. Hey. You turn around. Is it him? That's our word. <laughs> huh? This your car? You spot a figure yelling off in the distance at you. You nod your head to affirm their question. Need help? Uh, I'm a mechanic. You sigh. Unable to find a call signal, you head back towards the yelling man. Yeah, I think that's out the window now. It's not the same guy? But for a second there, I thought it would be. <laughs> What's he got going on there? The hell of a face marking yeah. on a panda? Closer, you, you get a good look at the man. A bear folk of considerable stature. His left eye is encircled by what seems to be a tattoo. Just by glancing at him, you can tell that he's a working man. The black fur of his arms darkened further by dirt and grime. You approach him. He seems startled as you close in, even backing up slightly. In fact, it's as if he's looking up and past you. What in the world? You're some sort of behemoth? Oh, uh, this year vehicle? Behemoth? Of course. How else do you think I spotted you from all that distance? Seeing giant mode on accident? Yeah. You're confused. To such a degree that you've lost the original question. He's blushing. The man blinks, then as if realizing something, he shakes his head and winks at you. <laughs> oh damn, sorry about that. You needing some help with your car? I, uh... 
You pause for a moment. You don't feel any ill intent off the winking bear, but he is a stranger. Although you are in a rough situation, it's not as if you could get much worse. Also, your whole goal was to call some stranger for help, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> unless, unless you're calling your roommate for help? I, assume, I I assumed it was a car number he got from his roommate. He opens his eye back up. I don't bite. Unless you want me to. <laughs> Mostly. I wasn't wrong. <laughs> You have heard the people of the Eastern Ward are quite nice, even if a bit overly pious. You decide to put your faith in this stranger. Oh no, it was a cross on his face. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. It's something going on there. It's its shape is interesting. Yes, uh definitely. I was trying to call a Sorry, but I'm not an Easterner or all too religious. The man interrupts you, as if correcting a record you never set. Hey, what does that mean? Does he, does he hear our narration? That's fine, I just need a me Yep, I'm a mechanic. Let me go to the- go get the toolbox from the truck now. Hang on a minute. Yeah, is he like a psychic or something that- You're confused, and then he- then he reacts, and then he goes on like, uh, sorry about that, as if he catches what happened. Yeah, is, is he cross fine to the narration? What's going on? <laughs> uh, you don't feel any, you don't feel any, yeah, he's like, you don't feel Ill, any ill intent, although you are in a rough situation. I don't bite. <laughs> like yeah, he's he responded, yeah, he's definitely, he's he responding keep, to us, basically. He keeps <laughs> reacting to narration. What the fuck? There was yeah, there was no discussion of religion at all. If he if he can read your mind, maybe like shape shifting works differently for him too. Like maybe he can kind of see past. So yeah, I don't know. So maybe, maybe like he see maybe he saw oh, like you in a weird way. like he saw another form or something. Maybe. Thanks. The strange mechanic heads off to his truck. You can't help but notice the lazy styling of his outfit. His tail wiggling freely from his pants tail tuck as they droop slowly slightly low what a weird fellow the name's whitman by the way that's a very small tank top and we can all appreciate this choice <laughs> what is this car shaped like look yeah, how tall it looks like the like, hood is it's like a dome it looked i was about to say it looks super round yeah is it was it made by capsule core the fuck it, the Dragon Ball, the Dragon Ball Z, like bubble built, like all these like weird like bubble shaped machines. Uh, Whitman comes back with his tool top and tool, his toolbox in hand. He sets it aside and he moves his hand towards the rear of your, rear of your vehicle. Be careful, that's hot. The words came out of your mouth as you noticed what the mechanic was doing. Drawing his hand near the surface, he checks the heat of the metal. Thanks, big. I don't know why I'm saying it. Oh yeah. Thanks, big man. The mechanic says he... The mechanic says his thanks, even though your warning was clearly not needed. You feel naive. You look down at your palm, wishing you could have been so clever. You look back up to catch him smirking as he raises the hood. He looks around for a moment before digging around in the guts of the machine. A couple minutes pass with no conversation to speak of. Awkward. I wonder how I could be of assistance. He's about to respond to it. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Mind handed me the spanner. I'm glad that we picked up on it immediately. <laughs> but at this point, it's very obvious. You stare at him, confused and kind of irritated. You roll your head and glance into the toolbox. What exactly is a spanner? <laughs> Metal thing, little adjustment on it. Should be on the top. Your eyes dash back up at the man. You judge him up and down, as if attempting to unfold the manner of trickery that's allowing him to interrupt you, <laughs> allowing him to reply to your thoughts. Sorry, got a bit of a bad habit lately about cutting people off. He reaches his hand out, beckoning for the tool. Spanner. 
metallic looking <laughs> wand, red <laughs> miniature club, <laughs> white gum you? dispenser looking thing. Oh my god. Okay, so I, I, is I the don't bottom know. One, is the bottom one a tape measure? It's that's told that's 100 percent the tape measure it's amazing because like i don't know a single thing about cars like at all but just like <laughs> i don't even know like, yeah. what a tape measure is is wild <laughs> i technically worked in a car shop but just for upholstery but i didn't i never really figured this stuff out that much because it mostly wasn't relevant uh but I, I had to do a double take because I read I read metallic looking wand and thought oh the screwdriver then I read red miniature club and I thought the the screwdriver <laughs> so I was like hang on a minute those are both metallic wands I guess he also he both doesn't know what a spanner is and doesn't know what a wand looks like <laughs> yeah, exactly because yeah. the, the the red miniature club is definitely also the metallic looking wand <laughs> okay. You reach for the metallic looking wand. The object is cold against your fingers. There's a claw at the top of it. There's a claw at the top of it? You hand him the tool cautiously. The visuals are doing cool stuff here. Yeah, this, this is, is great. neat. Also has to take an eternity to do unless you're just fast at drawing. It definitely has like point and click adventure vibes like looking at the what you can click on there sort of thing. Yeah. Thanks. You stand silently as the man toils away at the engine, his eyes focused intently on his activity. You keep your mind still, almost as if to prevent him from reading your thoughts until... So, where are you heading? Hellward. That's the name of the game! That's what the game is called! What does that mean? Huh. What? You don't look like one to me, but... You some sort of demon? No. Why would you think that? I'm just a tanuki. He pauses his activity for a moment, giving you a side eye. Well, assuming I don't need to go see my optometrist, you're a bit more than you put on. Hmm. My comparison to the demon story might have been more on point than expected. <laughs> what? Though, I suppose I don't know much about tanukis. You find yourself unable to hold back from speaking your mind. More than you put on? What exactly are you implying? Also, how did you even spot me from such a distance out in the field? I do not believe I know of any earth sign with eyes of a hawk. Plus the mind read. Chill there, big man. It's just true sight. I'm a demon, after all. You pause. He didn't even realize this man was a demon. Despite the chatter about them and warnings he'd received since venturing to the wards, you'd never given the subject of demons much attention. You probably He's should have thought about much. demons more if you're moving to a town called Hellward that apparently is right. full of demons. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, this guy just got a lot cooler. We've got two consecutive stories that I'm reading uh, for Let's Tries where somebody is just going to move to another town without doing any of like the basic prep that they should have done. Oh no. In fact, even after living for years near a break in the wall, you knew very few demons during your stu your stay in the North Ward. Okay, break in the wall. That's yeah. No, yeah. there's there's very that's... casual world building happening in one in one off yeah. lines throughout this, which I appreciate. There's a lot of questions going on here. Oh, this is this is a good intro. Despite the man's tone suggesting this should yield you better insight, you still found yourself absolutely lost. You were, for lack of a better word, a tourist. Means there ain't much you can hide from me, given these eyes of mine. Whether it's that feeling of confusion running around your skull right now, or that modest little form you're wearing. You're, you're lost for words. Realizing you're so exposed brings you much dismay, especially given how easily it was done. No incantation, no etheric object or tome. How did I not know about this? Don't worry about me. Most regular folk ain't got true sight. Just one of the nice blessings I got. But supposing it's a secret, I'd make sure to keep your license and plates up to date once reaching Hellward. I got a hunch you ain't one for driving, and the badges down there sport similar 
equipment to my eyes. <laughs> it ain't as good as the real deal, but you get pulled over looking like that and get lensed, and they'll light your ass on fire if you ain't got the right papers. I... That never happened last time I visited. Wasn't exactly legal for them to use it before, but with things ramping up, well, just some friendly advice. Figure out what's best for you, big man. I didn't even realize anyone could just see me. You stare down at your hand for a moment. To you, it doesn't just look like your hand. It feels like it. My deception is good enough to trick myself, and yet... He reaches... His hand reaches out once again, ignoring your rambling. Hand me the screwdriver if you could. You let out a sigh, refocusing on the task. <laughs> You've seen a <laughs> screwdriver before. This should be I, easy. I, I, hope, I hope it makes you pick between that and the... Oh my god, <laughs> we're doing it. I think we're doing it. Certainly this. I have to do it wrong. <laughs> I, I have to. Yeah, I was about, I was about to say the, the exact same thing. The white gum <laughs> dispenser. <laughs> That's... I I know that's not a screwdriver. I'm just studying your wares. Most people would call that snooping. You're in my mind. How dare yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> Most people. Here, hold it for a second. You grab the weird object. It has ridges on its on the head of it and a metal clip. What is this object he anyways? He doesn't know. He actually doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's measuring tape for measuring things here hold on to it yeah like that I'm upset Whitman <laughs> grabs at a tab that was sticking out of the dispenser he pulls it a long strip lined with numbers and dashes extends from the object and then whizz, the enclosed reel comes flying back at you with haste quickly you drop the tape measure back into the toolbox but it's too late ah <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, couldn't help myself. You shoot the bear guffawing at your expense across stair. <laughs> ha ha. Wait, that's not me. Oh. <laughs> Ain't every day I meet someone who don't even know what a screwdriver is. You're awful unique, big man. He's doomed if there's a lighting on fire threat. Like, he doesn't. <laughs> there's <laughs> other so things fucked. he needs to figure out. He's so fucked. Uh, you can still, wait, you can figure it again? <laughs> <laughs> this, I hope this somehow leads to like a bad ending <laughs> <laughs> the tape measure ending you can play with it if you want play? he makes me sound like I'm a child well a bit of curiosity ain't gonna kill you nah there's a tape dispenser no I'm fine You know, yeah, it doesn't yeah, keep yeah. getting new dialogue. <laughs> I was just so <laughs> taken aback by the option yeah. to pick it again. <laughs> this is definitely it. Nice job. You bask in a second triumph, hearing the mechanics praise. Some hairs on your tail even begin to stand on end, but the moment quickly passes. Sorry to bring down the mood, big man. It's all right. It's better I travel the wards with such knowledge than not. I didn't exactly study up, I suppose. I'd rather not have any ass... I'd uh, rather not have my ass lit on fire. What exactly takes you to Hell Ward, anyways? You pause, realizing the man can practically read your thoughts thanks to his gift. Could you close your eye? <laughs> Uh, it don't exactly work that way. Well, you can tell the man already knows the rest of what you're going to say. Still, he patiently waits for you to finish the sentence. That would be, <laughs> that would be frustrating. Yep. I'm moving there. Oop. He's quick to reply. Pretty adventurous coming to Hellward all the way from the north. He smirks, glancing back at you. Not that you got all that much fear, I'd imagine. So, why Hellward? I... Lady friend? 
Uh, um, oh, I, I don't know if it's... Yeah, there we go. Uh, I see. I think it's... I can't tell. Sometimes it double reads an input on my Xbox controller and like that's why sometimes you'll see text auto populate instantly instead of over time mm-hmm. is that it'll like get to it inputs. But a few of these like skipped ahead really quickly and it makes me think that they're trying to do that thing where visual novels will kind of like interrupt themselves on a timer. But the timer yeah, set so, like the timer set so quick though that I don't even get to see it. <laughs> right. The absurdity of being read like an open book is more than mortifying. And you know he's more than aware of how uncomfortable his line of questioning is making you. Still, he is fixing your vehicle. Even then, you can't bring yourself to just go along with what he discovered. See what, exactly? You're gay, right? Annoying? I suppose I am. Yes. Ain't too used to expressing that, are ya? Not exactly tank top confident yet. (laughs) Not exactly, no. Makes sense. Obviously, you got your reasons. Some part of you is happy you did, though. You'll get there eventually. What do you know? You say that as if you're some old sage. I mean, I guess you can't tell how, but... (laughs) (laughs) I'm only 46. I ain't all that old. Seems pretty old to me. You're doing that on purpose now. Also, I got a man in my life. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, no one told you to not... (laughs) Yeah, no one told you to not judge a book by its shit. (laughs) (laughs) The mechanic pulls back all of a sudden. Are you alright? Yeah, yeah, I'm alright. Hand me that rag, quick. Nope, he's gunked. He blew it. He reaches his arm out aggressively. It's covered in some kind of fluid. You can tell whatever occurred, he's not too happy about it. Please let you choose the... Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> the tape measure. <laughs> <laughs> Demanding. He grabs the rag and begins wiping away at his arms. Shit, he's going to flip. Who's going to flip? Nothing. This shirt's pricier than it looks. Of course it is. <laughs> Whitman lets, lets out a long sigh as he tosses the rag to the to his side. That's not a fit you just get off the shelf. Yeah, no, he ordered that online. Yeah, you have to find that. That's very specific. Sorry about that. So, you're dating some big dog folk? Yet again, you find yourself frozen, with no experience in discussing your relations with anyone but prospective dates or your former roommate. The subject is quite sensitive. Is that his fantasy dog folk? Has he never met this person? I'm guessing Tanukis aren't all too progressive when it comes to all that, huh? But you're in the wards now. Might get a dirty look or... Might get a dirty look or, or two, but the chance of you getting your face bitten off is pretty low. <laughs> wait, wait. Damn. And you got a lot of face to bite, big man. <laughs> so, loosen up a bit. Calm down, you have just so much face. <laughs> I wonder what he looks like right now. How big is his size? Is he just like full, like, turning red mode right now? He's right. I'm not back home. I need to acclimate. I have been here for more than a year, after all. This should be good practice. Good outlook there. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, my friend, roommate, she was getting married. So I drove all the way down to Hell Award to get her something special from a restaurant she always bragged about as a parting gift. He, my boy, er, well... Yeah. Uh, my boyfriend works at the restaurant, and that's when I met him. He showed me around since the food would take all day to prepare, and we just kept in touch. The bear stares at you from the corner of his eye. He obviously has something to say. Just speak, bear. 
you love this dog folk, don't you? What? Damn it. Y whatever. Yes, I like him. I haven't seen him in an entire year, though. You seem confident about him. I'm sure y'all will hit it off just fine. You really think so? What's he look like? That seems to be the problem. <laughs> you pause. Your head fills with all sorts of flowery ways to describe his, this person. You can see me, right? Of course. Then I suppose it doesn't matter, then. You pull your tail to your side, then, as if by some fancy magic trick, you pull out an entire laptop from behind it. The bear doesn't seem particularly surprised. That's what- Oh! He's got a fucking video game inventory as a tanuki. He just- <laughs> He just- ha he, What? He, yeah. Oh, that's- that's amazing. I'm like, how is he moving with just a suitcase? Didn't he- he said he spe He said specifically, and I wasn't sure what to make of that line at first, uh, he said that he spent the last several days, uh, grabbing everything and- and it all should be on his person. And I'm like, what is that? Like, I- does he mean the suitcase? But he means literally on his person. Like, he's got storage as a tanuki, I guess. That's wild. Is, is that a thing Tanukis can all I know about Tanukis is that they're shapeshifters and have huge balls, but that that's like pretty yeah, much it. Yeah, that's that's the that's about it for me. Uh I just vaguely know uh what was it uh Tom Nook and some random was it there's the I think there's a Studio Ghibli movie where the Tanukis fly with their balls and uh the person I that co-hosted the last Let's Try I did of a visual novel as a Snooky, and so they shapeshift. But I don't I don't know about the inventory of magic, but this sounds like we can just accept it as being a thing he can do. Or or for just I wonder if we're reading it into it too literally, and it's just because you're kind of like a nerd who doesn't know much about cars, so it's like you you have your tech on you at all times kind of thing, but you just, eh, he, I don't know. I mean, it's a whole laptop. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't know from, how you would, yeah, hide he just that reached, out of view. He just reached past his tail and whoops, a laptop. Oh, it's cute. You flip it open, qu flying quickly to a well-visited picture folder. You're so lonely. You sit beside the bear for a moment, showing your screen. Your tail dirties itself as it wags around the dewy grass below. Sorry, my cellular device has very little storage and isn't good at receiving images, so I keep my pictures on here. I was going to print them out, some of them, but that just seemed a bit absurd. You point out a picture that particularly catches your fancy. You feel excited, as if showing off some achievement to a parent. <laughs> this one's really good, too. Wow, he's a catch, big man. The paradoxically jacked baker. <laughs> right. The 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 things the software is not gonna let you actually click on any of the buttons, like file, edit, image, or whatever. Uh probably not. No, it's just preceding the dialogue when I click things. Yeah. They're not gonna be interactive. <laughs> I was assuming he was gonna be a demon, but he seems like a regular dog folk. You can tell from a photo? Sometimes. He's kind of sage, and I get lost in his tirades all too often. But that just makes me happy, I guess. That's great. He's also into movies and stuff, and writes a little, but mostly he's an amazing chef. Oh yeah, he wanted to be an actor, but... The laptop screen turns off. It seems you forgot to charge it. Damn it. I know I forgot something. I wonder if you can see the charge level on this. No, there wasn't a screen to begin with. Or there kind of was. Before the photos came up. Uh, no. Charge level's not... Uh, Unless if that's charge level in the bottom right, in which yeah. case it's, it's looks in which full. Case it's, but... In which case it's full, yeah. That yeah. looks like a full battery indicator. Whoops. As you see your face appear in the black of the screen, you realize how carried away you got. Sorry, I, I got a bit. You look up at the demon mechanic. His expression on his face is soft and welcoming. I don't think... How short are you if you're looking up at a guy that's on his knees? 
Yeah. I took you to be some kind of strange deity or beast, but you're just a goofy kid, aren't you? I'm far from a kid. I'm nearly 30, and I don't know what a screwdriver is. I'm sure you two will have a great time together. You grab your laptop, pulling your magic trick off yet again in order to hide it. Almost done. Could I get those pliers? Rubber yellow pl pincers. <laughs> there is no <laughs> wrong answer this time. I can't be obtuse. Um. Yep, those. You mean this Taiyaki wrapper? Thanks, son. The mechanic continues to toil away at the guts of the machine for some time. Not much conversation takes place as you stare off into the distance. You take a seat in the grass, the wet surface of the ground rubbing against your tail end. You look back at the toolbox. The only thing left is a book of some sort. Feel free to flip through the album if you want. There's casually more art. How much art did they make for the... Oh, look at like the wrapper. All, all pictures of him in a Speedo, I'm calling it. We finally get to see the, the Taiyaki wrapper. It's got a, a goofy <laughs> little dog with the... It's like a money thief dog or something. I don't know. At least it looks like a Taiyaki wrapper because that's like those like yes. fish wafer things. Mm -hmm. You nod, grabbing the album from the box. It's for humanizing. What does that well, mean? Well, yeah, it, yeah, the comment about hands that you made earlier. Maybe it's a yeah. thing. Yeah. What does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> Well, a lot of folk ain't too fond of demons for all sorts of reasons. I like helping people, but sometimes they see a big man like me and get spooked. So I let them flip through the album to cool their nerves. Pictures, Pictures worth. worth oh. Uh, oh, yeah. No, so. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Pictures worth a thousand words. My intuitive sense is just off. Uh, interesting. Are humans re do humans exist, or is that just a, ter a term? Are they both? Do they both look like humans to other people? I wonder. Sounds clever enough. Though nowadays I run my own business, I just give them my card or use my phone. Much easier. That's why it's all the way at the bottom of the box. But <laughs> you open up the album. The first photo is of a bear folk with his arms wrapped around some kind of canid. The bear folk, while chubbier and younger looking, is unmistakably Whitman. The two were posed quite affectionately. This seems fairly intimate for a first photo, is that? Yep, that's me and him during one of his trips. I'm a bit of an open book. Plus, it works well for disarmed folks if they see you in a relationship, even if it's gay. You don't recognize the location, but on the left of the photo is a dog folk with a stern expression. Him? He's a bodyguard. Well, escort, I suppose. You scan over the photo once more. Upon second glance, his boyfriend seems incredibly familiar. I wonder if he's some sort of politician. Nah, he's an actor. Wow, I must have seen him in some film. I guess that explains the escort. How did you two meet? Childhood friends. Well, more like foes at first. Childhood foes. Your mind <laughs> wanders to thoughts of stereotypical student relationships blossoming into full-blown romances. The kind of thing you'd seen on televised dramas. We met at an orphanage in the north side of the wall. Check the next photo. Orphanage? <laughs> he looks like a little terror now. You check out the next picture and you see the same pair in their adolescence. Whitman even shorter in his youth. It's some kind of group photo. So this would have been like 40 years ago? That kid got wrecked. Kicked directly in the <laughs> face. In the face, yeah. <laughs> Heh. <laughs> Stout. Thanks. Sorry. 
You grew up in an orphanage? That, his internal reaction almost builds this idea of like, oh, he's super jacked because he, he, like, he grew up fat and he literally could always hear other people's thoughts about his body and it gave him body image issues. Now he works out all the time. It's like this tragic undercurrent to what happened here, potentially. What happened to his parents? No idea. Uh. Yeah, I never met my parents or heard a word about them. Been there as long as I can remember. That's... I'm sorry. Don't worry. Not like I'm all too interested in... In not, I'm all too interesting. Yeah, it's a typo. Not like I'm all too interested in meeting them. They're probably dead, anyways. His, on the other hand, died when he was seven. Killed in some feud that took out a large chunk of the wall. He was at school when it all went down. Unlike me, he came from a pretty wealthy background. He even went to school in the North Ward itself. But when everything went down, well. He lost it all that day. One thing led to another, and he ended up in the same rat's end of an orphanage I lived in. How incredibly grim. My mind just went straight to television nonsense. You prostrate slightly. I apologize for my unfortunate display of ignorance. Oh, no need to get all formal, especially to me. Still, your boyfriend. Honestly, I'm surprised you didn't ask why he's kicking someone. It just didn't seem like my place to ask, but, well, why then? Because he was an awful little shit. <laughs> of course, I didn't make his life all that easy in the beginning or anything. First, I fucking hated the guy. Couldn't stand his face. Whining a little prick, would pick fights with everybody, even the adults. Wasn't as if we treated him awful or nothing. Uh, he just refused to get along. But I caught him crying when he thought he was alone. His aura and thoughts were like nothing I'd ever seen before. Kid was a mess. Beyond just sad. It was like everything just lacked meaning to him. Like he wanted to... Well... So I decided to start acting nice to him, even if he still treated me like shit. Not like I was a bad kid or anything. How benevolent. Must have been quite difficult. Little shit spit in my face. Twice. But, I... now, I, but now I like it. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, but now I ask him to do it. <laughs> I don't know how the hell I did it. Eventually, he started making friends and got pretty popular. Then we started hanging out a lot. Told me all about his life and his parents, the friends he wanted to see again. Also, that he wanted to become an actor. Apparently, he was taking lessons before everything had happened. Honestly, I thought he was nuts. A demon in the wall with that kind of pedigree and ambition. He almost sounded like normal folk to me. But I still like to see him go off. When we were teenagers, well, we moved out and got some crappy place together. It was even worse than the orphanage. No water, no nothing. May as well have been a cardboard box. Ain't all too good with remembering who exactly was bitching over what, but we had gotten to a pretty intense fight over everything. For a good month, the two of us just, uh, for a good month, the two of us jumped between not speaking to yelling. Again, I ain't much remembering the reason why. But at some point, it all boiled over. But instead of us splitting it apart, well, I pinned him against the wall and we started making out. I never really told him I liked him or anything like that, but I guess it didn't need to be said. Ever since then, we've just been together, working our way up in the world. Sure, it hasn't been easy together, but eh, together, it's been awful fun. It's been like 30 years. What an aggressive relationship, but still, lifelong friends turn lovers. My relationship pales in comparison. 
<laughs> it's not a competition. That's what he says. Are we in love? <laughs> you slide your claw between the next two pages to free them. The surfaces have probably held together all this time under the pressure of the toolbox. <laughs> oh, it's him outgrowing the orphanage dude. Aww. It's a picture of him, again, in an unknown location, this time standing next to the older dog folk from the previous photo. The photo seems more recent. Unless he ages backwards. That must be the orphanage. Good guess. Another photo from the wall. That's the man who runs the orphanage. He used to run it with his wife, but she died some time ago. He looks like a kind man. He had a tooth on him, but him and his wife were a kind soul. I kind of thought of him as dad, or closest thing, since I don't have one. You look lower on the page. It's a similar picture. However, the building in the middle is clearly different. I renovated the place as a favor. You're mesmerized by the contrast between the building and the two photos, as well as the difference between the clean, modernish home and its squalid surroundings. All these years spent here, and I still don't know what the wall really is. The word tourist pops into your mind again. The orphanage is pretty close to the slums. It ain't all too nice around these parts, and everything's pretty tight in, but we may do. It's gotten better with time. Well, at least in the north. Could I ask, what exactly is the wall? You feel embarrassment asking a question about the monolith you had been homed next to for over a year. He doesn't seem offended, however. The wall? Hmm. I ain't a historian, but I'll try try me best. Probably another typo. I'll try my best, mm. kid. The walls? Well, kind of like the floodgates of hell. It was constructed when the population of hell started to get a bit too much to handle. It wasn't really that there wasn't land in hell for everybody, but... Actually, better I show you. Here, let me see that. What is the setting? <laughs> yeah. What is going on in this world? Also, by the way, when his when his like you know childhood partner or whatever when he talked about him like getting mad and part of the wall breaking, I associated those two things directly linked. Like I thought his like boyfriend was like Akira or like, Tetsuo <laughs> or something. Like I thought he was having to freak out and just like blew the wall open. <laughs> yeah. I also got thrown off. Like, is he was he is he driving to or from the wall? I thought he said he was living by the wall. But he yeah. lived in that other place for a few years? I'm a little mixed up there. Yeah, I'm not sure. The demon reaches for the album. You hand it over, and he begins flipping towards the back. What? Okay. Those Does what's some... happening with these, I these images are rad, though. Yeah. Some kind of messed up bug worm. Oh, that's a worm. Because it goes, it starts in the bottom left, then worms to the right, then back to the left. Uh, that looks like a human in the bottom right corner. And like the top right are just like wolves, just regular wolves. And the, the top middle is like anthro characters with like some kind of like camel or sheep or something on a leash <laughs> like this this is a lot, a lot to parse lot. the bottom right picture is uh oh, i was gonna say it's incomprehensible it actually it looks like it looks like the butts of pigs that are like in a pond with those pond. lily pads say, it and was stuff like, it was like yeah lily pad vibes yeah like pigs or hippos or something that have risen from under the water and so stuff's on top of them my first glance was like something alien there's a lot to parse visually Huh. Eventually he comes to a page with photos laid uh, layered into the sleeve. He pulls a few out from the bottom. What in the world are these? The photos contain off-angle shots of desert landscapes. In some of the photos you can clearly make out some beast. Some small, some large, but none you've ever seen before. That's hell. 
a landscape filled with beasts and fiends. No one's all too sure how hell got to be this way. Some say the beasts there evolved to take on the inhabitants. Some think Demiurge made them that way. Either way, a great lot of hell is like this. Then of the places that aren't, they're usually walled off and guarded. Ain't exactly easy to set up camp in hell, so if you got no place to live, you're better off in the wall. Your attention is still drawn to the photos. No one you see... On one, you see what looks to be a city off in the distance. That place? Apparently it was a trade center at some point. It's pretty close to the wall. It's in New York City. Some people know. still live there, but it's unguarded, so there are beasts all over it. We weren't allowed to get all too close. Why would anyone choose to live in hell itself? Way, way back, when it was a far safer place than fending off out of hell. Plus, people gave their souls to, to the, the great devil, Demiurge. So they were pretty powerful, even compared to the beast. I wonder what the definition of hell is here, because it seems like it's just a some kind of contagion or corruption or something happened to, like, a country, basically? And there's just a wall around it or something? Like, it, it's not like a gate to hell, like a different dimension. It's just, just physically just over there, it sounds. You think back to the history books you rifled with when you were much younger. The tales of despotic dragons who ruled the old ages and the lengths humanity would go in order to escape their tyranny. There's the word humanity again. So demons were just people seeking refuge. See, you probably know more than me, honestly, but yeah. Back then, they were escaping dragons, and the mighty devil promised them powers and protected lands. It was a pretty good deal at the time. But the dragons disappeared eventually, so now we're just a lot of losers who don't even possess our own souls anymore. Your only real out is being dead. What a dire state, you think to yourself. Eyes still focus on the image laid out in front of you. And when you see a large insect-like creature... The burrower? Freaky thing. It trailed us for nearly an hour before our escort got fed up. Got fed up? He blew it to bits. We actually took this photo as he was dragging it out of the sand. Guy's some kind of damn monster. It seems something comes to mind as the bear begins laughing. <laughs> Honestly, I shouldn't take in a picture of my boyfriend during the event. He got coated in guts and started yelling at the escort. Honestly, hell isn't all that bad. Neither were the walls, really. Plus, the powers he gave us can be pretty useful, thinking you get lucky enough to have some fun ones. He points to another photo. A pack of what looks to be wolves standing, staring at the photographer. Off in the distance, you can make out a few fighting. Like these beasties. What do you think of them? They look like some kind of wolf beast, I suppose? Deceiving, ain't they? I thought so too when I first glanced them, but they were actually pretty smart the more I watched. They're able to relay information silently to each other. The entire time they were watching us, uh, the entire time they were watching us, they were chatting back and forth secretly about how they could possibly eat us. They have tentacles? Uh, are those like thought tentacles? Like, are those like non physical? Just or... that, just one, yeah, I'm wondering if I'm supposed to think about that thing. They're just, they're just coming out of their chests or something. That's how they're talking to each other. Those are Weird. upsetting. <laughs> I couldn't keep my eyes off of them. Just ain't really ever ran into a beast that's been all too interesting in my book. But hell's full of them. Pretty neat, right? Over time, lots of regular folks started to take position around the walls, and they didn't exactly see demons as humans. Even the name demon ain't of our own making. Not that anyone cares all that much anymore. Back then, it was a fight to live. Either you risk it fending against those fiends in hell, or you risk getting crucified by the nuts on the outside. But I guess things have gotten better. Had they really? You thought to yourself before realizing what you'd said. <laughs> 
a lot better than what people were cutting each other down with swords. Most folk nowadays don't even know how to fight. That's pretty nice in my book. Your eyes look at the last photo in the batch. It's a large beast. Flowers on the back of it. Those? Some kind of hippo-looking beast. They tasted great cooked up. You ate them. I'd eat them again if I got the chance. Anyways, it ain't like demons are all too innocent either. We got our reputations and name for a reason. Our powerful anatomy and magic is granted to us in exchange for our autonomy. At any moment, we could be used by the devil to do any manner of twisted acts. Not that it's ever really happened, but still. Plus, there was a time where we thrived on killing and enslaving outsiders, turning vagrant souls into demons for our god. Pretty spooky stuff, ain't it? You say that as if you were there. Nah, but I know that much at least. Anyways, don't take too much pity on us. I had to take a moment to remember that he's 46. <laughs> it's like, how, how exactly how right. old are you? Yeah. We put ourselves in this position. More like your ancestors did. Woman seems to not hear your thoughts, or at the very least, ignores it. He stuffs the photo back into the album sleeve, but then something comes to your mind. Wait, how did you get these photos? They're yours, correct? Oh. Uh, you know that first photo? He flips back to the photo of him and his boyfriend. You examine it again. Nothing seems too off. Upon closer inspection, you make out the background. Seems to be a beach. That's also hell. What? The same place with the giant beast? That's why we had that escort. Some kind of powerful mage sent by Demiurge. An escort sent by the devil? That's unbelievable. Well, believe it. I thought he seemed like a bit of a pushover, but he's got a crazy aura about him. Must have had some kind of protection on him to block true sight, because I couldn't make heads or tail of him. But he wasn't all too mean, just seemed uninterested in it all. We were actually told no photography, but we snuck shots when we could. Actually caught him side-eyeing us one time, and he didn't say anything. Why were you even there? Some weird, eager director offered him a crap ton of cash to do the shoots. I honestly don't know why they picked him. It was a pretty ambitious movie shoot, honestly. It's a long story, I'd rather not get into it. He's such an open book, I'm surprised. He described himself as being an open book. He flipped further into the book. What is this? It's an aerial shot of Hellward. But how? Top of the wall. Ain't an easy shot to get, I'll tell you that. So do they not have planes or drones in this? Because he seems like uh, he's, he's a bit startled by an aerial shot being a thing, I guess. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. If, it, if cars look this modern, it's hard to not imagine like planes also existing, but... I'm also getting some answers of the uh, <clears throat> the scrolling background that of us driving earlier. I was trying to parse some of it, because some of it looked hand-drawn, and some of it looked like it might have been a, a filter. And mm -hmm. this, this, this especially answers it, because this is definitely a filter over a photo. And it has that some of those like scribbly little lines that you see in the brush in the uh, background that we were watching, but also parts of that background were definitely hand painted, so it's like a tool assisted kind of thing. Also, I was just wondering: is this VN uh, never going to have sprites potentially? Because I keep like, thinking we... about that. Like, does the <laughs> we've never we've never seen a sprite, so we don't know if it has them or not. That's honestly kind of incredible if it doesn't. Yeah, like I, if it keeps Although, us up, that's, that's kind of incredible. In a way, the comic panel that Whitman has is like a sprite, right? It's like yeah, the, it's a a portrait, like a portrait equivalent to yeah, a sprite. Because definitely, we have a portrait that has a bunch of different anime, uh, a bunch of different faces, yeah. and uh, once you get out of this context, you, you do you realize that besides maybe the background, which also might be changeable, uh, the sprite 
the the portrait we're looking at doesn't have anything that identifies it as being specific to this scene as opposed to other stuff we're seeing so it could mm -hmm. come up later if he if he comes up again they could use the same panels potentially yeah so that might be what they do instead of sprites which is interesting i dig it is hellward nice <laughs> Depends what you mean. It's a pretty city, and the people are friendly enough. But it's brimming with trouble. Recently, there's been a lot of activity around the wall. I'm sure you heard it before, but it's best to keep your distance. Fiends, beasts, all sorts of crazies. They try and keep it sorted down there, but sometimes it gets a bit wild. Kid like you could hold your own, but it's much more dangerous than even the Northern Be Breach. On top of all that, it's filled with badges. Again, they're friendly enough, but depending on what's going down at the time, they can be a bit eager to keep the law. I will say that uh, I was kind of thinking early on, like, wow, the way that information's introduced and the pacing of the story is like really up there. Like, it's really doing a great job. But kind of the moment we opened up the photo album, it kind of started dragging because <laughs> yeah, we started. Yeah, it's it, we're being hit with like a lot of information. Like yeah. the first time they mentioned the wall, I was like, ooh, that's evocative. But now I'm like, oh, yeah, I, mean, I just I want to see more now. You can be you can make someone really curious by dropping these hints at something and letting them fill in the gaps, but this has turned into like a scattered series of almost unrelated information dumps that are both related to this character and then related to the setting, then back to this character, then back to the setting, and you're like, Are we gonna see Whitman again? Is he in the rest of the game? Cause or what's going on there? But also like it's just a lot of it's a lot of information that like without narrative context, it's harder to parse how it's gonna come up or what's gonna mean. And you can definitely like try to I would I would definitely hope to like spread this out more, which is interesting because it was doing so well right up until the moment this photo album was open, basically. Mm -hmm. The mechanic tosses his head side to side, his neck cracking with each swing. I'm about done here. Oh, sorry. You're about to close the album when he speaks up. You ain't got to put it away. You haven't snooped through it all yet. He's blushing. His, ca his cadence tells you there's more I'm, he wishes for you to see. I'm, I'm telling you, he wants to see the beach photos of him and his Speedo. Yeah. I, I, I don't know why. I, you have, I you haven't seen, seen it, all the ones that look good in. He flipped further in. <laughs> <sighs> That's the real meat of the album right there. What exactly is... Are those hellhounds? Well, me and my partner st started off by helping random strangers, usually with car problems, but really it was anything we could lend a hand with. Eventually we got some other demons in on it, and we started a bit of a recruitment agency of sorts, hiring demons and folks down on their luck and finding them work. I turned it into a full-time gig, and it really took off. He points over to the photo of what looks to be a doctor. Off in the distance are what appear to be co-workers making rude faces at her. She's a vampire. She actually had a pretty good resume from doing medical work while traveling, so we found her a job in the North Ward. They're picking on the girl because she has a crush on the head doctor next to her. And this one right here. His finger moves over to a pack of strange-looking canids. They're demons. I actually hired them on to help me renovate the orphanage initially. They're so helpful, I grab them all the time when I need to get my hands dirty on a large project. They seem pretty strong to be carrying out those large objects, given their size. They're dwarves, working with metals in their blood. That's a lot of mixed concepts. <laughs> yeah, I, was just, I was just about to say, we just had Vampire Drop, which already felt like a lot, which yeah. we've gotten so far. And These I, guys I are simultaneously dog folk and dwarves and, and dwarves. demons. Hell yeah. You move your eyes to the next photo before Whitman has a chance to poke at it. It's a photo of a pair of fish folk in a shady bar. Neither of those are fish. And it's look a nice looking bar. Oh, oh yeah. Whitman's on the same page. <laughs> yeah. They're mammals, technically. That one's pretty personal. Well, more so to my partner. The fellow on the left used to be a servant to my boyfriend. He was picking him up from school when everything went down. Obviously, he was without a job, but he still came by all the time to the orphanage to check on him. Practically his only friend at the time. 
when we got older, it became pretty obvious he was barely scraping by. He was homeless, apparently, and his gift uh, ain't all too great for a demon. So we let him stay with us for a time, and eventually my boyfriend found him work at a local bar near where we live. He comes over all the time. You glance over at the last photo, a wolf holding up some kind of badge. In the background is a kid who looks close to him, being held by some cat folk. It can be a little tricky narrating some of these bits, too, because like I don't know if he's like about to tell like a tragic story of like an old friend or something like that. It's like, oh, this is a friend I yeah. hang out with all the time. And I'm like, oh, uh, OK, <laughs> this is my best bud. He died that yeah. day. <laughs> and that's the commissioner of Hell Ward. Always good to have a picture of authority. You got him that job? Well, not him exactly, though we're good friends. The guy behind him, he's actually a badge in Hellward now. Originally he was a daycare worker, but he was looking to expand his horizons. He's pretty charming, which makes sense given what kind of demon he is. He's an like incubus. This? Yeah. What kind of demon would that happen to be? <sighs> The kind that he gets, he, the kind that gets what he wants by raising his tail. You really didn't have to answer that. Anyways, that's what all these photos are. I even made a business card and everything. You look over to the mechanic, who seemed Moondy. Sorry, <laughs> that's the name of the comic about the demons where they're, where they're incubi. <laughs> I was like, hang on a minute. I finally remember. It's so fucking hard to remember because that word is never used in the comic. So I'm like, what? I don't know what it means. I do wonder what the uh, the country of origin is of the the author and artist. There's just enough hints that that English is the second language as far as I can tell. But that's I've never looked mm -hmm. any further than that. But this uh, this game has had, has, had, has had hints like the... Uh, like obviously we're talking to a panda but also like we prostrated ourselves and like did the whole like like mm -hmm. a, a kind of apology that's very not local <laughs> so it's right. i'm curious you look over to the mechanic who seemed more animated than ever before obviously taking much pride in this achievement that's incredible you help a lot of people yeah though now most of it's handled through lnet we have way more photos and testimonials on there. <laughs> Should I be paying you for your work you've done today, then? Nah, of course not. It's pure hospitality on my part. Although... The mechanic pulls something from his pocket. Upon flashing it, it appears to be his business cards. That's how you know it's uh, not written by an American because no one has business cards here. <laughs> Since you're heading down to Hellward, if you ever meet any demons or folk who are looking for work, I'd appreciate it immensely if you gave him my card. His face is adamant. You grab a few of the cards in his hand. After all, he did spend all this time to help you. It's the least you can do. Yeah, you know, I remember at my dad's job, we had like this whole stack of business cards at the desk. And so I, I had some in my wallet, but that's like... The only business cards I've ever encountered as a person outside of media, basically. Yeah, they, they definitely exist, but it's still, yeah, yeah, yeah. in some cultures, like, they're way more common. Yeah. Nowadays, it's mostly used as a joke at somebody's expense. Like, he, he prints his own business cards? <laughs> like, it's something right. that a really conceited person does about himself that isn't actually for a business. I can't promise success, but I'll certainly try my best. You're a saint, kid. No, I'm a demon. By the way, I'm done. Actually, did we ever confirm if Howell was a demon? Or just a Tanuki? It, I wasn't sure if seems, he was just denying it or not. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, my character was definitely very concerned that you were... I mean, he suspected that you were more than a Tanuki, but I don't think we, we, we didn't settle that. Yeah, I'm not super clear. He probably finished before he gave the spiel. That's a possibility. You look back at the toolbox. You're about to place the album back when it when you notice a poster. What is that? Hmm. Oh, that? It's some promotional material my boyfriend got. Ain't all too sure what it's about. Well, I mean, he told me at some point, but I just forgot it. He's always getting all sorts of junk and expensive shit and handing it off to me. 
And if I throw it away, he gets mad. It feels as if something dawns upon you looking at the poster. You look up at Whitman. The two of you stare at each other for a moment. <laughs> What's with that look, kid? You know, I feel as if I've seen you before. Well, I mean, my business is expanding, so... Are you on OnlyFans? N no, do you also star in films? Like... <laughs> adult, like adult films? Like indie? Very indie films? <laughs> <laughs> like the words amateur? <laughs> in, a, in a movie? <laughs> in, in, a, in a chance. I'm not an actor, so... <laughs> Did your thighs by any chance inspire a dream I had today? You don't know why you're so certain of it, but you know he's lying. It's clear as day to you. I ain't lying, kid. No, you were certainly in a movie. It had zombies in it, actually. I think I, think I remember your boyfriend in it, too. He's having a strong reaction, so it's definitely that. The man goes silent. His face lights up red. Clearly you said something he wasn't expecting, or read some abhorrent thought. Did I say something off color? Just looking at you, I can tell you no. I guess I shouldn't be too shocked. You are into men, after all. <laughs> what does that mean? The man swallows the lump in his throat before explaining himself. <laughs> Wow. Called it. Called it. Called it immediately with almost no context leading no into context. it. <laughs> yeah, this is us being dorks. It's like, but, well, we know uh, where this yeah. scene's going. <laughs> well, yes. I used to star in some adult films with my boyfriend. He glances at you from the side, catching you speechless from the admission. Wait, you didn't even realize what you knew? You speak up without thinking. I do not watch adult films. I mean, accidentally, once, out of curiosity. Wait, wait so Curiosity I, and accidental are definitely what the same words mean. <laughs> I The thing that I'm hung up on is, if it was true that he saw him like, in a movie that had zombies in it, it's like, were they making produced porn that had, like... High effort. A, yeah, like, a plot and, like, stuff happening in it that wasn't just it's, people yeah. hooking up. <laughs> is 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 this a, is this a situation where somebody who is a professional actor was also in like porn that was mu that's like high profile and identifiable as opposed to, as opposed to like like you know extremely amateur stuff that's like right. anonymous and so on like that's like that's like a plot like what is it like zombie apocalypse like oh they're holed up and they escape and they're holed up in the mall and then sparks fly oh like that's all I can think. <laughs> I'm assuming they weren't the zombies, so... Right. But I'm not into that kind of thing, honestly. Bullshit. Right, surprisingly, you ain't lying. Well, yeah, that's probably how you recognize me. I cannot believe the one smut film I watch, I run into the main actor. How is my look so awful? That's not how that <laughs> sentence would end mentally for me. <laughs> it's all right. I'm not ashamed of it or nothing. I'm just about, my head's just about to explode or something. For unrelated reasons. He calms himself down before continuing. Just those were rough times. Rough times? I'll bet. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I just want to quickly say to you, it's not going where I was expecting at all, at all. Because <laughs> I thought the setup, I thought it was, he thought that he had seen him in a movie and then I thought Whitman was freaking out because I thought it was going to be something like where it wasn't a movie. Like he was envisioning like what's about to happen inside the walls or, you know, like, like he was uh, envisioning a zombie apocalypse that was about to happen. But I guess it was. Yeah. <laughs> well. The two of us had just found a place outside the wall that allowed us to stay. It wasn't the best, but since we generally passed as normal folk, we were allowed to stay. His entire goal in leaving the wall was to become an actor, and really I was just tagging along at the time. But we didn't know nothing about actually getting him that kind of work. All interviews turned him down when they learned he was a demon. 
Anyways, I came up with the idea of doing charitable acts in hopes we bump into the right person. <laughs> Honestly, it was a shit idea, but we were desperate. One day we got lucky and helped the right folk. Well, kinda, he wasn't a regular director. <laughs> but still, he heard a situation out and didn't just get him a gig, but put me as... Well, guess he just thought I looked the part. So that's how you got involved with those adult films. Yeah. But where's the rough times? Well, that comes after. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I felt like the rough times were sort of self-explanatory. You were kind of desperate looking for work, but okay. Well, several smut films later, opportunity came knocking again, this time from a friend of our director, Bud. It was a huge gig, genuinely a golden opportunity, and it was offered for my boyfriend. But the catch was it required him to travel around a bit. He wanted me to come with him, but they weren't having it. See, they weren't exactly in the know on us being more than just friends. And already, he had a strike against him given he was a demon, but they were willing to risk it. But my friend wasn't having it either. He told me he was going to march into the director's office and tell him everything. Whitman's face turns particularly sour for a moment, as if recalling it fills him with some amount of distress. That dumbass nearly threw away his entire career because he couldn't handle being away from my bum ass. How long would he have to be separated? Around a year. That's a long time. Well, life's full of sacrifices. So what? So I broke up with him. What? Oh, I couldn't have him ruining his life over me. He begged me not to, but I ignored him and left. Said I don't want anything to do with him till he comes back a star. You're awful. He sneers at your thoughts. Sorry. Well, he thought the same. He didn't take it well. Still remember his face that day. I just can't imagine breaking up with someone so important to me over that. It wasn't exactly easy for me, you know? I couldn't let it just be a bluff. I even went back to living in the damn wall for an entire year. It was terrible. Cheap little shit place, riddled with bullet holes, honestly reminded me of being a teenager. But he came back, eventually. I did tell him where I was heading, so he did find me eventually. And he came to my broken down door just to give me the cold shoulder. Said he hit it off with some, some nobody from the cast. Told me he didn't need me anymore. Obviously, I was a bit pissed from living in that shithole, even though I put myself there. From him coming back just to start shit. So I told him to go fuck himself. This is a lot for a person this we just, just met. <laughs> I, I, I've been thinking about this whole time, being like, like, hey, do you need help with your car, buddy? And then it's like, oh, uh, I would like to get to know you better. We, uh, uh, no, I would maybe, maybe not. <laughs> it's a it's bit like, much right now. It crossed a line at some point. We're like, okay, um, life, life you're story, volunteering a lot of story today. <laughs> really digging into some shit. You try your best not to think your snarky thoughts over the situation. Yeah, I messed up, all right. That entire year, all I could think was that I really lost him. I felt so stupid. And all I can think of is how I'd rather live in some crappy... I'd rather live some crappy life with him than without. Anyways, it was about a month before he came back around. This time he was drunk and apologetic and handsy. I took him in, and when he woke up, we had a pretty good heart-to-heart. -heart. Then we decided to... Uh... That's a face. <laughs> <laughs> then we fucked. <laughs> Woman's face grows red again. But you're unsure why. Certainly couldn't be talking about having sex. <laughs> My god, who would ever? I mean, at this point, obviously, there's nothing off limits, so... Yeah. No, not that. He fiddles around in his pocket for a moment. You can't make out what it is, but it seems like he has something in hand. 
And then he reaches his hand forward again. You examine it for a moment before noticing. See, it's his left hand. I knew it. Yeah. Okay. But it's his index finger? But it's his no, index it's not. finger. So I'll Wait. get. Yeah, that's Soli's index. It's gotta be, right? Yeah. Uh, uh I think that's his that's his ring finger, right? I think his thumb is. Thumb's that I think, yeah, maybe I think this is his. Kinda... I think this is his right hand's ring finger, because that's. I feel the... like it, I feel like it's Wait. easier to. No, yeah, that's his left hand's index finger. That is, that is his thumb, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it starts too back too far back to be a finger. Yeah. That threw me. <laughs> you realize if you're married, they're called your husband, right? <laughs> I ain't some idiot. I know that. <laughs> it's called dramatic <laughs> tension. <laughs> I plan my half an hour stories I tell people. <laughs> Husband's embarrassing. Makes me sound old. Boyfriend sounds much better. You're 46. Yeah. Truly awful. You went through so much trouble, though. You could have never met him again. Jeez, you're quite passionate over my story, kid. You weren't supposed to care. You're supposed to just listen for an hour. <laughs> Sorry. I already said I messed up, but all that didn't pop into my mind until I was already stuck in that shithole. Honestly, when I saw him after a year, I was so relieved. Even when he lied to my face about being with someone. I wasn't really all too worried about him finding another man. Just maybe he'd hang around all those normal folk and forget about me. Besides, I knew who was bluffing. I got true sight. Didn't make me any less pissed off, of course. Anyways, I'm already paying for it, alright? What does that mean? Whenever the smug son of a bitch talks about me or his marriage, he calls me his wife. He'll even go out of his way to describe me as some bearish lady. Oh no. If he's just hiding it, he could say no comment. Despite the name calling, the bear seems quite happy by the prospect of being teased by his husband. Actually, I remember now. That's what the poster was about. Bear woman? <laughs> no, sometimes you. <laughs> Sorry, you gotta get wet. <laughs> Racing, <laughs> wet exactly. and wild. <laughs> what am I supposed to yeah, do with that? I read the I read the first half of that sentence. My brain immediately broke. Okay, no. <laughs> sometimes you gotta get wet and wild to reel in the big fish. To get through the rough times. It's like a reminder to not fear getting in there for what you really want. It'll be tough and you'll get dirty, but it'll pay off in the end. The fisher. Wow, that's, um... Sorry, I just remembered it because he gave it to me saying it reminded him of me. I guess I can understand why. Here, I brought you a metaphor. It's motivational, <laughs> you assume, even if a bit generic. You can keep it if you want. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait. No, no thanks. It's torn and a bit messy, but for some reason you feel compelled to take him up on his offer. Sure. Thank you. Uh, now that our pact is sealed... <laughs> no except problem. Except a gift from a demon. Yeah, I was going to say, actually, uh, it seems a bit weird, but in, in retro, just thinking about it more broadly, yeah, I guess if a demon is offering me something, uh, I would probably just be like, oh, okay. <laughs> now you need to kill three people in three days. <laughs> Whitman stands up, patting his dirtied hands off on his pants. Care to start up the vehicle for me? Of course. You head into the driver's seat, giving the key a twist. <laughs> Much to your delight, the car springs to life, and best of all, with no weird noise. You did it! That's amazing! Your coolant was busted. I could... I can tell you ain't exactly been driving this toy all too often. Might want to give it a bit more love. Otherwise... I was told to start her up, but... Cars like to be used every now and again. 
Also, probably take her to the shop sometime soon, just to make sure there ain't anything I'm missing. He pats at your vehicle before letting out a relieved sigh. Well then. <laughs> Best get going, right? What if we never saw him again? <laughs> he just that literally is be, not in the rest of the story. <laughs> that would be wild. Surreal. Is there any way I can repay you? I can think of a way. Oh, no, uh, no, no, no. Mighty generous, but like I said, just pass around those cards of mine if you get the chance, kid. <laughs> That's the demonic pact. Spread them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely do that. He begins to turn away, but something pops in your head. He seems to notice. What's your question? Oh, well, I guess I may as well ask. Can I see it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> where exactly are you heading? Do you live in Hellward? Nah, I live here in the East Ward. Actually, just drove all the way down from the West. Boy, Hubby was filming a movie over there. Usually we ride together, but they needed him quick, so he flew. I hate flying, so I drove. I actually was just headed home to catch him. Sorry I delayed your reunion. It's all good, kid. You really have nothing left to say. It feels a bit sobering to be leaving this person, despite being a stranger to you not too long ago. In all honesty, you haven't made many friends since moving to the wards, and this was the, one of the first people you engaged with in a deeper conversation in nearly a year. Well, you have his number. He was very sly about that. He looks at you for a moment before smiling. You know, awful rude of me. I never caught your name. Howl. Well, Howl, don't tell no one, but the second number on the card is actually my personal cell. <laughs> this is what you just... Yep. Uh, I... Feel free to call me if you're ever in trouble. You did just me mentally monologue at him about how lonely you are. I... Or if you're ever feeling, just feeling a bit lonely, you've got a new friend and number away, all right? You smile back and nod at your new friend. Thanks. Well then, best you get going, else you'll be late. He steps back. Good luck with your journey, kid. He heads off to his truck. He looks back one last time before pressing down on the gas and driving off towards your destination. <laughs> What's happening? Immediate... Uh-oh. Your tires skid to a stop, barely avoiding collision as the car with the car in front of you. Horn blares angrily with the uh, from the vehicle behind you, making your fur stand on end. Morning fog covers the, sh the, str the streets, but between the sounds of people and city lights, you can make out where you are. Ah, that's loud. New location, let's go. I wasn't sure if this was a flashback or of dream or the next scene. Oh, it's really loud. This is extremely modern JRPG style audio. No, totally. Oh, it's so loud. Thankfully, I have stream volume. Yep. But it's also about stopping time. But you... So I've escaped. Oh, it's still playing. Let's turn it down a little bit on my end. Did you? There, there we go. go. Tab out. Did you? Before we ended, I wanted to click on the thingy. <laughs> what does it oh, do? Oh, yeah, yeah. What does it do? Midgard Dragon Slayer. Yeah. Let's go. Start. And what is thy name, Noble Dragon Slayer? <laughs> Howl. That'd be as, un as uncreative as possible to Jim. <laughs> Yes, our new dragon slayer. What is that? Wait. <laughs> Wait, what is this Game Boy game? It's got like the Game Boy, it's got like the GameCube sidebar, like. <laughs> got a bit Jim. of a, like a, it's like a Dragon Quest. Wait. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, sir. This is goofy as shit. All right, what's the king sound like? Oh, yeah. Uh, ha ha, calm down, dear Jim. You stand at the procession of your dubbing? Oh, like, oh yeah, titles. 
Uh, mere days ago, you were but a humble servant of the land. Now you stand before us as... Oh, this is you. Now you stand before us as Dragon Slayer. The crowd cheers. You bask in the moment, every word of the king ringing true. Found on the outskirts of the citadel, you had no memory. You were taken in... By... <laughs> we, don't have, we, don't, we don't have this kind of time. What? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Flirt right away. Flirt, Flirt right away. King, as you know, I am a stranger to these lands. I hope you do not think it rude, but what exactly is your story? Ruling? Yeah. No, no, not at all. Also, please call me Glenn. Believe it or not, I was born the king. At a young age, the previous king and the queen died, landing me the crown despite my age. I was raised by blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Proclivities. <laughs> Proclivities? <laughs> He's gay. <laughs> the king's gay, too. <laughs> Everyone's gay. Everyone's always gay. Oh, yeah. It's the magic. Sorry to hear that. Glenn, look at the tongue. Look at the dumb little tongue. I, I don't well. recall any NES games going into this type of uh, content. <laughs> Losers. <laughs> Task, worry, flirt. So you prefer men. <laughs> Do not hide it. Does it interest you quite a bit? Yeah. Well, then speak your mind. <laughs> This is wild. <laughs> it's what I would have picked if I had a large hunky dragon slayer under my command. I'm quite odd myself. I can work with anything, really. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much here that part of me wonders, like, uh, should we not be skipping all this? But this is in this is ridiculous. Yeah, we're, we're already two ridiculous. hours in. I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't yeah, do yeah, this yeah. in full speed at normal speed. No, 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 no. But I want to see what happens. Shit, are you catching feels? <laughs> <laughs> You've been alone for quite some time. <laughs> Services, but I am quite lonely. Are you looking for a partner by chance? Good. Oh, what am I saying? Sorry, my lord. <laughs> I... <laughs> I have not tried for love in a long time. Once I perish, the crown will certainly lead to much turmoil for my people. But I simply do not produce air. The mark on your loin glows. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear about such cruel fate belies the Citadel. On the dawn? On the dawn. Well, I hope it's not too uh, assumptive, but you seem quite wise. What is uh, happening? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, <but it's... laughs> You're not that old, huh? She was Jim. I remember he was Jim. <laughs> Forgot an Andrew Jim already. Yes. <laughs> Wait, how many times? Oh. <laughs> 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 What is happening? The escalation being displayed by two fucking Zelda sprites getting closer to each other is so it surreal. I was just absolutely not ready. So like, obviously, a lot of these VNs are going to be very horny. That's what they are. But it's just so funny to me that like that the in-game like NES game equivalent is like apparently adult content as well. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I did not. <laughs> this came so out of nowhere. You pull close to the king. <laughs> what is this about? Your hands wander onto his sides. Despite his claims, he's quite soft. You pinch down. Muscle. It's definitely there. You just had to feel for it. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, my guards are watching from a distance. This is highly inappropriate. Sorry. You pull back. Your mark radiates. <laughs> it's quite all right. Private chambers? And he pulls you in. <laughs> You're crafted well, Jim. <laughs> Believe me, under different circumstances. Date. <laughs> Look at the background. Hey, victory. I want to go Get out in. with you, Glenn. <laughs> I know I am the Dragon Slayer. However, I feel I can be of much more use to everyone by your side. 
but the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> if the dragon would appear and attempt something, I can do my best job by your side. I can't let this slip past me. Consider my proposal. Dragon's definitely going to kill him. This is some next level, like, beyond anything you could ever do in an RPG. But, uh, but instead, what you would do in a tabletop RPG is like... I know that you had an idea of what the plot would be, but what if I made up a completely different plot yep. line on the, uh -huh. on the fly? Yep. I'm going to romance the king. <laughs> Renat 20 it bard. It completely feels like that. Like, I was not expecting all the flirt options to just keep going and going and going. This yeah. is ridiculous. You pull close to Glenn, wrapping your arms around him. You see movement out of the side of your eye, certainly as soldiers. You move his hand onto your mark. It radiates warmly. Isn't that your crotch? That's, that's extremely <laughs> presumptive. <laughs> Hey, if the soldiers want to join, the more the merrier. <laughs> this tells me I must be by your side. I will provide for you everything, I promise. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Let's get it. What is this next scene? Uh oh, those are sounds. <laughs> uh -huh. A week <laughs> later. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Wow. There's a CG. Oh, and why still hides the text? There we go. <laughs> Gonna have to hide that. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, you're prepared to have like a scrolling box, I guess. There's the Dangpa art. The king's large, erect phallus presses you up eagerly against your rear entrance. Another typical night. <laughs> mm, we're trying again tonight. Are they, are they trying to get him pregnant? Is that what they're saying? <laughs> This is incredible. I didn't, it's, it's, I didn't realize that this game was going to be full of M mpreg compression. This is so funny to me, again, because it's sort of breaking the format of like, oh, we're playing an NES game, but it just wants to go back to the wishful fulfillment of like, okay, it's getting horny and this is a VN. So, yeah, like, so here's, a, yeah. here's, your, here's yeah, your detailed CG. Exactly. We got our sex scene regardless. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> A glance down tells you you're not getting much sleep. <laughs> They're kissing. Uh, you think to yourself, bearing Glenn's child. I can't believe this mark <laughs> is that powerful. It's so much to take in. That's what it was. It really, it really is. It's that. For those that don't, for those that are not aware, in this might not only be furries, but at least I've seen it from furries. There's this like pink mark that people will draw on a character and it'll glow in certain contexts and it basically enables a male character to get pregnant and this is just a whole oh. subgenre and that's what they're tagging in here so they were not joking about that sub that that pretext about him not that being able to would... to bear heirs like he's trying to, he's trying to become he's actually trying to bear his child that's fucking wild that went completely over my head <laughs> oh my goodness Let's see if the CG changes, just for our own sakes. Oh, they're in. There we go. Slurp. Slurp. That's just all it says. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that's just a full screen sensor at that point. Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh it's moving now. <laughs> that's creative. Uh, well, he's very good at this. <laughs> I saw the word member. <laughs> sometime later. Wait. I feel like wait. some people are going to be pissed we're skipping over this, but it, yeah, I mean. But it's a lot of text. <laughs> oh, it's now, a he's, lot. now he's sucking on them. Here for another hour. <laughs> he's just squeezing them together and sucking on them. <laughs> Well, I'm happy for them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Several years later. <laughs> <laughs> he's, just, <laughs> he's just extremely pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is oh, God. <laughs> oh, damn it. I feel bad for laughing because I just feel like you know, yeah. someone's like, just like really genuinely. We're not, gen we're, not genuinely. Making, we're not really making fun of it. It's just we've inflicted some hilarious pacing on ourselves. <laughs> yeah, this is this is absolutely <laughs> fucking wild. It's like we're witnessing the relationship we were just explained and fast forward again. Like it's, 
the next part we go back to the main visual novel next thing we see is jim broken down on the side of the road and he tells us his life story <laughs> yep oh and the dragon's here what's that gonna oh no is he gonna fight the dragon ending one dynasty how many endings are there this I'm is a, insane i'm gonna have to come i'm gonna have to poke at this this is funny the uh, this, yeah. I did not know what I was signing up for when I clicked on the Game Boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It just escalated so much. And it's also so much more art again. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the, the amount of like, yeah, CGs that were just thrown our way for going into like the extras, which, which with that no was context of. Astonishing. I was going to oh, say, there God. was like a bunch of options. I think some of them were to like go on your mission, right? <laughs> like. I would assume so. The fact yeah, that instead well, of doing, instead of playing one. the game, we just romance the person directly in front of us in the prologue, and then they kind of ending. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely wild. All right. Well, everybody, uh, this has been uh, Hellward. You can check it out on itch.io <laughs> if you are 18 years or older, and you can get more endings in the Game Boy game, presumably, and also find out how far the current story goes in the actual VN. Uh, this has been Illusory Wall. He does Dark Souls videos and Demon Souls videos. And what's the nightmare thing people say now? They say like Elden oh, Souls like Sekiro like born. Yeah, <laughs> like, they need, they yeah like Elden Souls putting... born Kuro or whatever. It's like, yeah. yikes. Like ever since, ever since, like Soulsborne was already rough, but then they started just being like, all right, we're just going to mash all the titles in. But he just put out another video about Demon Souls today. The yeah. same day that he put the video out, he played this game with me. Oh my god! Like what a what a what a <laughs> yeah, turnaround! We've had a weird day. <laughs> uh, everybody, percent. everybody, go to his new video and notice the part about where he talks about the dirty man sacks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you hear in the distant roar of the dragon. Heed his call. What does that mean? Wait, what does that mean? <laughs> No, I mean, he's just gonna torch you all up. <laughs> what is it? What does heating the dragon's call mean? Oh, did it just reset? What a static case of deja vu. Nothing. Okay, it reset. I was like, what does the distant call of the dragon mean? Can I just walk away? I don't know what's happening. Anyway, we're, we're done here anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was this Thanks. game. See you guys later. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I did not expect this ending. Mm -hmm.